Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest in our series of virtual programs from Cooperstown, New York, not too far from the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Bruce Markison from the Education Department, and I'm glad to be your host for our popular trivia game, So You Think You Know Baseball. This is the second installment. We tried the show out a couple of weeks ago, and it went so well, we thought, let's give it another shot. We have three teams of participants, um, contestants, waiting anxiously, but waiting patiently to try and show off their knowledge. Uh, they think they know baseball. We certainly hope they do, and they'll do their best. Our game is patterned after the popular television show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? We actually uh, came up with this game about 20 years ago, roughly, when Who Wants to Be a Millionaire started. We're not giving away a million dollars, unfortunately, but we are giving away family memberships to any of our teams who can come up with nine consecutive right answers, nine innings of questions. They do get progressively harder as we move along. Basically, the rules of the game, we have multiple choice questions, and we do have some lifelines to help folks out in case they get stuck. So if our contestants find that they're not sure or if they just don't know what the answer is, they can use one of these three lifelines. First is poll the participants. That's where we'll take a poll of our audience members to see what their consensus on an answer might be. And that's where we'll ask our viewers to type in in our chat room what they think the right answer will be. We'll try to get a, an informal consensus uh, as to what the audience is thinking. So that's one of the lifelines. The second is the 50-50 toss-up, and that's where I'll remove two potential answers, two wrong answers, and that'll leave the contestants with a 50-50 chance at guessing correctly. There's also a third lifeline called to the bullpen, and that's where the contestants can ask one of our viewers to help with an answer. If a viewer thinks that they know the answer, there is a button, raise hand, a raise hand button that they can press to indicate they want to help. And then our contestants will be able to select one person, whoever they think looks intelligent, whatever their hunch might be as to who that person is, they can pick one of our helpful viewers to try to help them out. And uh, that perhaps can uh, provide assistance in getting through that particular inning and that particular question. So those are our rules of the game. First up, we have from just a little bit outside of Chicago, the second city, we have Tina and Alex Beard joining us. Tina and Alex, welcome to the program. How are you doing? We're doing pretty good. We're being accosted by our dog Dodger right now. Otherwise, uh -huh. I see. Yes, good. Alex appears to be slightly distracted. <laughs> um, it could be that your dog is like my dog and simply wants to help, wants to contribute in some way. Uh, you'll have to do your best to navigate that. Uh, I understand, Tina, that you have been a White Sox fan qu quite a long time. Tell us about that. I was born and raised on the South Side. So, you know, I've been going to games since I was a little kid. You know, back in the day in the old Comiskey, you used to be able to get into games for free after the fourth inning. So I don't think I saw a complete game until I was an adult. Um, mm. But it was definitely some really fond memories. Now, I'm not going to ask you to reveal your age, but uh, <laughs> you go as far back as the Bill Veck years when he owned the White Sox? I am coming in in the 70s, so okay. just kind of at the tail end of some of that. Yeah, well, Bill Veck, his second ownership stint was around 1976, mm -hmm. and I think he owned the team, I want to say, through about 1980, 81, so it looks like you came in uh, during that period of time. Do you remember the uh, the games when the White Sox players wore the short pants? No. You do not? Okay. Well, that no, happened in no 1976. Unions. Bill Veck thought, you know, it's hot and humid in Chicago. Let's have our players wear short pants. And the players hated it. They were mocked by players on the other team. And after three experimental games with the short pants, that was it. The experiment was over. Bill Beck had many great ideas. Unfortunately, the short pants for his players, not one of them. Um, how about you, Alex? Are you a White Sox fan as well? Has Alex disappeared? Oh, there he is. 
I'm back. <laughs> he was taking care of the dog. He better you be like a Sox fan or we've got problems. You're yes, not a white Sox fan. Yes. You like oh, the yes. <laughs> okay. Very good. So we have a White Sox fan and we have a Yankee fan. Alex and Tina from uh, outside of Chicago, are you both ready to play? I hope so. You don't sound that confident, Alex. I need a, <laughs> I need a more confident answer before we proceed. Let's play ball. Yes. All right, let's play ball. Here we go. First inning question. Category is history of baseball. Where is the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum located? We'll have four choices that'll come up. Providence, Rhode Island, Cooperstown, New York, Seattle, Washington, or Juneau, Alaska. What do you think of those four? Providence, Cooperstown, Seattle, or Juneau? Uh, Cooperstown, New York. All right. Cooperstown, New York. If you were paying attention right at the very beginning of the program, I actually gave the answer away. And uh, let's see. Are you correct? <laughs> is it Cooperstown, New York? Indeed it is. We are not in Providence. We are not in Seattle. We are not in Juneau. I have to tell you that our interns put this uh, particular game together a couple of years ago. We've done some modifications to it. Um, I thought they made a mistake on the abbreviation for Alaska. Uh, they put AK, and uh, I thought that meant Arkansas, but they're correct. AK is, in fact, Alaska. AR is the abbreviation for Arkansas. So how dare I question our interns on that? They were correct, and you are correct, Cooperstown, New York. So right off the bat, a good start for Tina and Alex. Let's move on. Second inning. Category is teams. The question, which expansion teams most recently joined Major League Baseball? Mets and Yankees, Padres and Expos, Blue Jays and Mariners, or the D-backs and the Rays? So which of these two teams, which of these pairs of teams were the most recent to join Major League Baseball, the Mets and Yankees, Padres and Expos, Blue Jays and Mariners, or the D-backs and the Rays? Diamondbacks and the Rays. Okay, so Alex says D-backs and Rays. Tina, you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why wouldn't you agree? Let's see if you are correct. Which of these pairs of teams most recently joined Major League Baseball? The correct answer is, in fact, D-backs and Rays. That happened in 1998, five years after the Rockies and the Marlins joined Major League Baseball. All right, good guys, very well. You um, are doing just fine. Two correct answers, no lifelines used. Let's move on. Third inning of play. Category, players. Who was the youngest player in Major League Baseball history? Was it Tommy Brown, Ken Griffey Jr., Joe Nuxhall, or Robin Yount? I saw this a couple days ago. It was like 15. Who was the youngest player to appear in a Major League game? Tommy Brown, Ken Griffey Jr., Joe Nuxhall, or Robin Yount? Don't feel like that's right. We could do a 50-50. Yeah, but that's not going to... They're I mean, conversing. I would go with your first instinct. I, yeah, I think not, it's not solid because I remember seeing something about last week where he's like 50. Now, remember, you I do have three lifelines. You can pull the participants. You wanna we can do the 50-50 toss-up where I eliminate two of the wrong answers. Or we can do the call to the bullpen where a particularly intelligent viewer will try to give us some help. I think he knows what it is. I think he's just second guessing himself. All right, what do you say, Al? Griffey. I know it's not Griffey or Yunt. Is it Joe Nuxhall? All right, you want to go with Joe Nuxhall as your correct answer. All right, let's see. Is it right? Is it Joe Nuxhall or is it one of the other three? Brown, Griffey, or Yount? 
It is, in fact, Joe Nuxhall. He was all of 15 years of age when he debuted as a pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds. Excellent. Good job, guys. This is actually one of those records that technically cannot be broken today. There's actually a rule that if you're to sign a contract to play either Major League or Minor League Baseball, you have to be at least 16 years old. Nuxhall was 15. So unless they change the rules, this is a record that will never be tied or broken. All right. You may be a little nervous there, but you came up with the correct answer. How are you two feeling? I'm nervous. <laughs> I thought okay. it was Bob Feller, so I would have been wrong. You thought it was Bob Feller? Yeah, that was the first name that came to mind until you showed the list. Yeah. First that came to mind, he was not one of the four choices. Two Hall of Famers, Ken Griffey Jr. and Robin Yell, but it actually ended up being one of the other two non-Hall of Famers. It was Joe Nuxhall. Very good. All right, three for three. Let's continue. So you think you know baseball. Fourth inning of play. Our category is players. The question, which 1954 Rule 5 draft choice from the Brooklyn Dodgers organization went on to a Hall of Fame career with the Pittsburgh Pirates? Was it A, Willie Stargell, B, Roberto Clemente, C, Bill Mazeroski, or D, Maury Wills? I think it's Rafi. He never played for them. Which of these four men was a Rule 5 He's draft take choice my taken from the Brooklyn it. Dodger organization and then became a Hall of Famer with the Pittsburgh Pirates? What do you think, Tina and Alex? Is it Roberto Clemente? Okay. You asking me or telling me? <laughs> this Ellie. is not Jeopardy. You do not have to put answers in the form of a question. You're going to go with Roberto Clemente, right? I am. You are. Okay, here we go. Is it Roberto Clemente? Yes, it is. He spent the 1954 minor league season in the Brooklyn Dodger organization, actually played for the Montreal Royals. Then was selected by the Pittsburgh Pirates, the first choice in the Rule 5 draft. And then he made his debut for the Pirates the following year, 1955. Good job, guys. You're four for four. You're rolling. Let's go now. Fifth inning. Category is history of baseball. The question, who is forever remembered for his infamous bonehead play in 1908, costing the New York Giants the pennant? Is it A, Cy Seymour, B, Larry Doyle, C, Fred Merkel, D, Roger Bresnahan? Just a reminder, you do have all three of your lifelines. If you want to use one of them here, that's uh, something to think about. Is it Seymour, Doyle, Merkel, or Bresnahan? Fred Merkel? It's not a question. <laughs> Fred Merkel, yes. <laughs> all right. Know. At first, you said it with a bit of a question mark, but then made it a statement, which is what we like to hear. You're going to go with C, Fred Merkel. Let's see. Is that the right answer? Of course it is. The infamous bonehead play, he failed to touch second base, thereby negating a run that would have uh, scored for the Giants. And according to the rules, the uh, letter of the law, the umpire actually made the proper call, calling Merkel out for not touching second base. You guys are rolling five for five. You have not used a single lifeline. Doing very well. Sixth inning now. Our category, players. Which Brooklyn Dodgers pitcher was the first winner of the World Series MVP award in 1955? Was it A, Tommy Lasorda, B, Carl Spooner, C, Johnny Padres, or D, Sandy Koufax? Sixth inning questions do get progressively harder. Which Brooklyn Dodger pitcher, first winner of the World Series MVP 1955, was it Lasorda, Spooner, Padres, or Koufax? May we use a lifeline on that? You can use a lifeline. Which of the three would you like to do? You have 50-50 toss-up, you have poll the participants, or you have call to the bullpen. Maybe 50-50 it? 
All right, they want to do the 50-50. So that's where I eliminate two of the wrong answers. And I'm going to do that right now. We're going to eliminate the two answers on the left side of your screen. So take away Tommy Lasorda, take away no, Carl Spooner. And that leaves us with either C, Johnny Padres, or D, Sandy Koufax. I think they can pitch them. I don't know. Johnny is another lifeline? No. Tommy's only shooting for him. So our remaining choices are Sandy Koufax and Johnny Padres? That is correct. Johnny Padres, Sandy Koufax. Now, if you feel like the 50-50 didn't really help you, if you're still not sure, you can still use one of your other lifelines. Up to you. Yeah, I trust you. I think we have our answer on this one. Um, okay. I think our answer is going to be Sandy Koufax. All right, they're going to go with D. Sandy Koufax over Johnny Padres. Let's see if they're correct. Unfortunately, it was Johnny Padres, not the Hall of Famer, Sandy Koufax. Tough question. The 50-50, unfortunately, did not provide enough help. But uh, you guys did a great job. You got into the sixth inning. You really rolled through those first five innings, did very, very well. Uh, we will have a consolation prize for you, Tina and Alex. Did you guys have fun playing? I hope you did. Yes? Thanks for the opportunity, Bruce. Okay. You did well. Tell those White Sox fans that you represented the south side of Chicago nicely. <laughs> All right. Thanks, well, guys. Good luck to it. the next two. All right. They're very gracious. Tina and Alex wishing good luck to our next participants. And they are going to be from the other side of the country, San Diego in California. Joining us will be Kyle and Scott Plassman. So I'm just going to move ahead here to our next game coming up. Joining us, Kyle and Scott Plasman. Guys, how you doing? Hi, Bruce. Good. We're doing well. Thank you. All right. Now, Scott, you told me that you're uh, from just, uh, I guess, near San Diego, but I don't see a Padres cap on either one of you. No, we're, we live in enemy territory. You live in enemy territory. All right, Kyle, obviously you're a Dodger fan. Who's your favorite Dodger player? Uh -huh. uh, probably Cody Bellinger. Cody Bellinger. Yeah, I've heard of him. He's pretty good. Uh, he actually has an interesting connection. His father, Clay, who was a utility man, played on some world championship teams with the Yankees. Uh, Clay used to live in Oneonta, New York, which is only 22 miles from Cooperstown. And I know the Bellingers still have family in the central New York area. So there's a little bit of a connection there between Cody Bellinger and central New York, where we are. So you're both Dodger fans. Uh, Scott, how far back do you go as a Dodger fan? Um, long way. <laughs> yeah, about uh, uh, as same age as any little boy. I was probably seven or eight when I started following baseball. And that would be when? Uh, probably mid-70s, late 70s. So the Dodgers made a couple of World Series runs during that time. All right. So you remember the Steve Garvey, Ron Say, Davey Lopes teams? Indeed. Very good. Scott, you familiar with any of those names? Or actually, uh, Kyle, you familiar with any of those names I just mentioned? Uh, Steve Garvey. Yeah. But that's pretty much it. All right. Well, after our program is done, I want you to look up those other names. I want you to look up Ron Say and Davey Lopes because they were outstanding players. They were part of an infield that stayed together for many, many years. It was Garvey at first, Lopes at second, Say was at third, and then you had Bill Russell, a converted outfielder, at shortstop. So I'm, I'm giving you a research assignment when you're done here. I want you to look up some of these great Dodgers from the past. All right, past knowledge certainly is helpful. Current knowledge, helpful as well. Are you both ready to play? So you think you know baseball? Yeah. Excellent. A resounding yes. We'll review quickly the rules of the game. You do have the three lifelines. You can pull the participants. That's where our audience members will type into the chat room what they think might be a correct answer. We'll try to get a, an informal consensus from that. 
There's the 50-50 toss-up where I eliminate two of the wrong answers, leaving you with one correct and one incorrect answer. And then there's the call to the bullpen, and that's where our two contestants can ask one of our participating viewers to help with an answer, and viewers that want to do that can hit the raise their hand button if they think they know the answer. Those are the lifelines. Let's get to the game. So you think you know baseball first inning. We will lead off with the category of Hall of Famer. Always a good topic. What team did Hall of Famer Lou Gehrig play for? Was it A, the Red Sox, B, the Dodgers, your team, C, the Yankees, or D, the Tigers? Uh, we're going to go with C, the Yankees. All right. Very quick on that trigger there, going with the Yankees. Not tempted to go with the hometown team, the Dodgers. With good reason, because Yankees is correct. Hall of Fame first baseman Lou Gehrig played his entire major league career with the New York Yankees. All right, good job, guys. Feeling nervous? Not really. Not really. All right. If you are feeling nervous, you're relaxed after the first inning. Let's move on. Inning number two. Category, managers. Who was the first African-American to manage in the major leagues? Was it A, Maury Wills, B, Frank Robinson, C, Dusty Baker. D, Larry Doby. Do you know any of those names? I don't know any of them. Frank. Yeah. Is that it? Uh, yeah, I think he was the uh, Indians back in the 70s. I think he was the manager. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're talking it over. I think we're going to go with B, Frank Robinson. All right. They like B, Frank Robinson over Maury Wills. Dusty Baker, Larry Doby, all four of these men played in the major leagues. All four of them didn't manage in the major leagues, but Frank Robinson was the first. And yes, Frank Robinson was the first African-American to manage in the major leagues. He was the skipper for the Cleveland Indians beginning in 1975. He was actually a player manager, something you don't see anymore, uh, at least not uh, in recent years in baseball. All right, good job, guys. You're two for two. Let's move on. Third inning. Category, World Series. Which team won three consecutive, three straight World Series titles from 1972 to 1974? Was it A, the Baltimore Orioles? Right. B, the Pittsburgh Pirates? C, the Cincinnati Reds? D, the Oakland Athletics? Now, you've gone through the first three innings without using a lifeline, so you have lifeline options remaining here. Or if you think you know the answer, you can just go without the lifeline. I think we're going to go with D, the Oakland Athletics. Yeah, this one hurts. But, yeah, we have to take <laughs> this one hurts. I guess that you remember 1974, D, Oakland Athletics. You are correct, Kyle and Scott, coming up with the correct answer. It was the Oakland A's. In 1972, they defeated the Cincinnati Reds. In, uh, in 73, they defeated the New York Mets. And then in 74, I mentioned that a moment ago, they defeated the Los Angeles Dodgers. Baseball dynasty from 72 to 74. Great job, guys. You're rolling. Three innings down, three questions answered correctly. Let's move on. Fourth inning. Category. Hall of Famers again. Which one of the following players was not in the first class of Hall of Famers in 1936? So the first Hall of Fame election was 1936. Which one of these players was not part of that first class? Was it A, Babe Ruth, B, Cy Young, C, Ty Cobb, or D, Hannes Wagner? So the first class was Ruth, Wagner, Matthewson, Ty Cobb. Fifth one. All are Hall of Famers. One of them was not part of that inaugural class elected in 1936. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it's B. Cy Young. All right. They're going to go with B. Cy Young. They think Ruth, Cobb, Wagner were part of the first class. They think Cy Young was not and they think correctly. Cy Young is the correct answer. I believe Cy Young was elected in the second year, if I'm not mistaken, and he was one of the players honored at our first induction in 1939. 
that's when we actually honored the classes from 36, 37, 38, and 39. Ruth Cobb Wagner, part of that first class of 36. Cy Young coming a little bit later. All Here's right, Kyle and Scott are rolling along, feeling confident. Fifth inning, Win. category, pitchers. Who was the first big league pitcher to appear in at least 1,000 games? A, Hoyt Wilhelm. B, Goose Gossage. C, Johnny Vandermeer. Or D, Cy Young. There's Cy Young's name again. Who was the first big league pitcher to appear in at least a thousand games? Wilhelm, Gossage, Vandermeer, or Young? What do you think, guys? Pretty sure that's what we're going You're not so sure. I'm not. Can we do 50 50? They're thinking it over. Now, remember, you do have all three lifelines remaining. So if you're not sure, you can do the 50-50 toss-up. We can poll our participants. Or we can do the call to the bullpen, where one expert in particular will try to help us out. Um, can we do what would you like to do, fellas? Can we do 50-50? All right. They want to do the 50-50. So I'm going to eliminate two of the wrong answers. Take away the two answers on the right side of your screen. Eliminate Johnny Vandermeer and Cy Young. They're not in consideration. Yeah. So that's going to leave us with either A, Hoyt Wilhelm, or B, Goose Gossage. Uh, we're going to go with A, Hoyt Wilhelm. All right. They're going to go with A, Hoyt Wilhelm. Now, both Wilhelm and Gossage Hall of Famers, great relief pitchers. But who was the first to appear in at least a thousand games? The answer is A, Hoyt Wilhelm. So you guys are correct. Nicely done. You use your first lifeline, but that's what they're there for. You still have two lifelines remaining, four innings to go. All right, take a deep breath. We'll move on. Sixth inning. Category is teams. The question. Which of the following was not an expansion team in 1969? A, the Seattle Pilots. B, Seattle Mariners. C, Kansas City Royals. D, San Diego Padres. So we have two Seattle teams, Kansas City, San Diego. Which of these was not an expansion team in 1969? You know, I know the Padres, so... Um, G Pop played for Seattle Pilots in '69. He was on that team. For the Seattle They're chatting it over. Mariners. Uh, we think it's B, Seattle Mariners. Okay, Kyle sounds sounds pretty confident. Scott, you agree with us? I do. You do. So they are both on board. They think it's one of the two Seattle teams, the Seattle Mariners. And they are, of course, correct. The Mariners entered the major leagues in 1977. That was eight years after the Pilots, the Royals, the Padres. And in case you're wondering, the other team was the Montreal Expos. They were all expansion clubs in 69. The Pilots, though, they had to move to Milwaukee after only one season. The city of Seattle was promised another team after the Pilots' departure, and they got that team in 77. So again, Kyle and Scott are spot on. They are doing very well. Two-thirds of the way through the game. Let's move now to the seventh inning. Still two lifelines remaining. The category is World Series. Who is the only pitcher to save four games in one World Series? Is it A, Tug McGraw, B, John Wetland, C, Troy Percival, or D, Mariano Rivera? Do you have the two lifelines remaining? You can pull the participants, or you can do the call to the bullpen. Mm -hmm. 
that are looking at each other. What would you like to do, fellas? Um, we're gonna the, let's pull the participants. Okay. So we ask, yeah. This is where we ask people to help us out. Okay, we're gonna use another lifeline and pull the participants. Okay, so they want to use a second lifeline, hold the participants. So what we're gonna ask all of our viewers watching us on Zoom, if you think you know the answer, we want you to go to the Zoom group chat. And there you can type in what you think is the answer. Uh, Ethan says it's Rivera. Let's see who else chimes in. Evan also says Mariano Rivera. We have two for Rivera. Three for Rivera, four for Rivera. Let's see if anybody else comes in with an answer. Lou comes in with a different answer. He's going with John Wetland. Couple more for John Wetland. Now we're up to four for Wetland. I believe we have five for Rivera, one for Tug McGraw. We'll give it another moment or two, see if anybody else wants to chime in. Max is voting for Mariano Rivera. So it's almost a split at this point. Rivera and Wetland, slightly more support for Rivera. Wetland is a close second. Nobody voted for Percival, one for Tug McGraw. So according to the audience, they like either Wetland or Rivera. What do you think, Kyle and Scott? We don't really have a consensus here. You do have an option of the third lifeline, which is your call to the bullpen. I'm not confident. Yeah, I think we want to call to the bullpen. Okay, so everything to get this one right. They did not get the consensus they were looking for. They got a pretty much an even split between Wetland and Rivera. So what we're going to do now is we're going to ask anybody that's really sure of this answer. We're going to ask them to hit the raise hand button on your computer or your device. And then Kyle and Scott are going to be able to call on one of those people. So we had seven participants raise a hand. Now we're up to eight participants raise a hand. So guys, can you see the participants who have raised their hand? I can't. We did see somebody in um, in the chat, go back to the chat. Somebody was very confident in their chat answer. Um, okay. Yeah, we want to we want to call in Lisa McIntosh. All right, so Lisa McIntosh. We're gonna have to turn on Lisa's uh, microphone. We had ten participants raise their hands. Lisa, are you with us? Yeah. Okay, Lisa, where are you from? Um, Boston, Massachusetts. Okay, you're from Boston, Massachusetts. Who's the only pitcher to save four games in one World Series? Do you think it's A, Tug McGraw, B, John Whitland, uh, Wetland, C, Troy Percival, or D, Mariano Rivera? Um, so Wetland. the audience, they were kind of split between Wetland and Rivera. Do you think it's one of those two, or do you think it's one of the other two? Um, Wetland uh, for the Yankees, and he won the MVP. So. Okay. Um, you don't sound like Elisa. What's your name? Cameron. Cameron. All right. You sound pretty confident, Cameron. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm thinking. All right. You think it's John Wetland, and you say that he won the MVP as well. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, uh, Kyle and Scott? Cameron's pretty confident. I think we're going to go with uh, B, Wetland. Okay. So they're going to go with Cameron. Cameron, Lisa, we thank you very much for helping out. They are going to agree with you. Kyle and Scott are going to go with John Wetland. Let me just try to get my cursor back on the screen. My cursor, there it is. Let's see. Is that the correct answer? Is it B, John Wetland? 
It is. John Wetland had four saves for the New York Yankees in the 1996 World Series. Mariano Rivera had not yet become the Yankee closer. All right. Whew. You got through it. Three lifelines have been used, but you needed them. You needed that third one because we didn't have a consensus, Wetland or Rivera. All done for the lifelines. That's the bad news. The good news is we have only two innings to go. How do you feel, guys? Pretty good. Feel pretty good. Okay, here we go. Eighth inning. Category, players. Question is, who was the first native of the Dominican Republic to appear in a big league game? Was it A, Juan Marichal, B, Dolph Luque, C, Ozzie Virgil Sr., or D, Sammy Sosa? Marichal, Luque, Virgil, or Sosa? Which of these was the first Dominican native to appear in a big league game? Well, we know it's not Sosa. I've never heard of Dolph Luque. I have heard of the other two, but I don't know the time frame. I think it's Virgil. I think so. I think we're going to go with C, Ozzy Virgil Sr. All right. They're going to go with C, Ozzy Virgil Sr. They think it's him, not Marichal, not Luque, not Sammy Sosa. Well, I saw Ozzy Virgil Jr. play. I never saw a senior play, but he, in fact, was the first native of the Dominican Republic to appear in a big league game. Good job, guys. How confident were you on that answer? <laughs> I wasn't. No, not really. Not really. You just you had a hunch? I, I, knew it wasn't the, I knew it wasn't Dolph Luque or Sammy Sosa, but okay. the, the rest of it was a guess. Yeah. Well, all four of these players, legitimate major leaguers, all from Cuba, or I'm sorry, all from the Dominican. They were from the Dominican Republic, but it was Ozzy uh, who was uh, the first. Actually, now that I think of it, I'm not sure about Luque. If he was, he may have come from another country. I'll have to double check on that. Uh, maybe I can have one of our bright fans look that up for me. But uh, Marichal, definitely Dominican. Sosa, Dominican. But Virgil was the first one, first player from the Dominican Republic to appear in a major league game. All right, eight innings down, one to go, no lifelines. So Kyle and Scott are on their own here. Let's see how they do with our ninth inning question. Category, players. Among position players, who was the youngest player in big league history? A, Granny Hamner, B, Tim McCarver, C, Tommy Brown, D, Jimmy Fox. Now, earlier, just so we don't have any confusion, earlier there was a question, who was the youngest player in big league history? Joe Nuxhall. He was a pitcher. This question's a little bit different. It's asking among position players. Who was the youngest player in big league history? Was it Hamner, McCarver, Brown, or Fox? What do you think, Kyle and Scott? Almost certain it's not McCarver because he was later and he was a catcher, and that's typically not younger. I've never heard of Granny Hamner. Um, I'm inclined to Tommy Brown just because he was included as an answer in the earlier question. I know Jimmy Fox was young when he started, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go with Tommy Brown. All right. So Kyle is going to go with what Scott indicates is what he thinks is the answer. Kyle sounds a lot more confident <laughs> when he says Tommy Brown. Does he have reason to be confident or not? Let's see. He sure does. Tommy Brown is the correct answer. The youngest player among position players in big league history, nine innings are done, and you guys are winners of So You Think You Know Baseball. Great job, guys. Very good. Thank Congratulations. You, How do you feel? <laughs> it's good. That's Yeah? Yeah. I'm impressed. He 
knows a lot more baseball than, than I do. <laughs> yes, his knowledge is very good. And once he looks up uh, Ron Say and Davey Lopes, I'm, I'm going to be even more confident in his baseball knowledge. Great job, Kyle. Well done, Scott. You are Thank champions. You. Thank you. So we're going to take down um, uh, your information. Uh, you will both receive family memberships to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Great. Um, I think that's something I didn't mention earlier. Our grand prize for anybody that gets through nine innings, as Kyle and Scott just did, uh, they get a family membership to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Uh, what that means is part of that, they'll get free museum admission. Our museum is currently closed, although we're hoping that we'll be reopening in the coming weeks. Um, once we do, Kyle and Scott will be welcome to come because they have basically a season pass. There are also a number of other benefits that come with being a member to the Hall of Fame, uh, including our excellent uh, magazine, Memories and Dreams, which comes out six times a year. Uh, there's discounts for our gift shop, lots of other great benefits that come with being a member. Thank you, guys. Congratulations. You did a great job. Thank, Thank you. you, Bruce. All right. Again, that's Kyle and Scott Plasman from near San Diego, California. And they are winners this week on So You Think You Know Baseball. But we are not done, folks. We have another game to go. We have another set of contestants. And these two are going to be joining us from a place a little bit closer than San Diego. They're going to be joining us from a small town where I used to work years ago, Whitesboro, New York. It's about an hour from Cooperstown, where I am. And joining us for So You Think You Know Baseball are Trey and Jim Murnane. How you doing, fellas? Doing well. Good. Thanks. Nice. Yeah. Now, Murnane is a name that is uh, kind of synonymous with baseball in the Utica area because for many years, the ballpark there was called Murnane Field. In fact, it might still be. I, I, I know it was renamed Donovan Stadium at one point, but I think they may have retained the Murnane Field connection. Are you any relation to that family? Yeah, it's great, great, great uncle, right? My great uncle. Really? Yeah. yeah. Terrific. Okay. I called that. So you guys live in Whitesboro, which is outside of the Utica, New York area. Uh, Trey, who do you like? What team do you follow? I like the Toronto Blue Jays. So you like the Toronto Blue Jays. At one time, the Blue Jays were the parent team for the Utica minor league franchise. It was the Utica Blue Jays way back, late 70s, I recall. And among the players who played there were Jesse Barfield, who went on to become a star in Toronto. So you like Toronto, which has a connection to your geographic region. What about you, Jim? What team do you follow? Uh, the Dodgers. You like the Dodgers. Why the Dodgers? My father hated the Yankees, so I grew up uh, 77, 78 World Series were the first ones I watched, so I latched down to the Dodgers. All right. So your father told you you better not root for the Yankees in these fall that's, classics. That's right. All right. And you follow the Dodgers ever since. All right. So we have a Dodger fan. We have a Blue Jay fan. We have Trey and Jim Murnane joining us from Whitesboro, New York. You guys ready to play So You Think You Know Baseball? I think so. Excellent. Just to review quickly the three lifelines. You can poll the participants to see if they have a consensus on what the right answer might be. We can do a 50-50 toss-up where I eliminate two of the wrong answers. Or we can do a call to the bullpen. That's where the viewers hit the raise hand button if they think they might know the answer. And you guys will then select one of those viewers to be your helper in call to the bullpen. So those are the lifelines there to be used. Let's go to the first inning. Our first question category is baseball lingo. In what inning does a stretch take place during a ball game? Is it the first inning, the seventh inning, the fifth inning, or the ninth inning? First, seventh, fifth, or ninth. When does the stretch take place? Seventh inning. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't quite hear your answer. Seventh inning. Here, I need All right. They both agree that it is the seventh inning when the stretch happens. Seventh inning stretch. Yeah, that's definitely a thing. That is the correct answer. Seventh inning is when a stretch takes place during a nine-inning ball game. So, Trey and Jim off to a great start. Let's move on. Second inning. Category. Teams. The question, 
What two teams joined the American League for the 1977 season? Is it A, Orioles and Athletics, B, Blue Jays and Mariners, C, White Sox and Indians, D, Royals and Twins. Now, if you two guys were paying attention during the last game, and I'm sure you were, you might have gotten some information pertinent to this question. Um, We'll go with B, Blue Jays and Mariners. All right, they're going to go with B, Blue Jays and Mariners. Were they the two teams that joined the American League for the 1977 season? They sure were. We talked about it earlier. The Seattle Mariners came into being 1977, and so did the Toronto Blue Jays. At the time, they were the second Canadian franchise joining the Montreal Expo. So two innings down, no problems, no hesitation at all. Trey and Jim are looking solid at this point. And let's move to the third inning. Category, Midsummer Classic. Who hit the first home run in All-Star Game history back in 1933? Was it A, Paul Wiener? B, Luke Appling? C, Ty Cobb? D, Babe Ruth? First home run, All-Star Game history. Which of these four Hall of Famers did it? Ruth hit the first home run in All-Star history, but I'm not 100% sure. You could maybe do a 50 50 on this one. Yeah, but I don't know. Up to you. Let's, uh, where do you want to pull the participants? No, 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 no. Okay, let's go with the 50 50. Okay, so they want to go with the 50 50. And that means I'm going to eliminate two of the wrong answers, leaving one right answer and one incorrect answer. So let's take away the two names on the left side of the screen. Let's take away Paul Wehner and Luke Appling. Okay. That is going to leave us with either C, Ty Cobb, or D, Babe Ruth. Okay. Um, I think we're going to go with D, Babe Ruth. So they're going to go with D, Babe Ruth. Better known for home runs than Ty Cobb was. So logically, that makes sense. First home run in All-Star Game history, 1933, and it was hit by Babe Ruth. You guys are correct. Nicely done. So one lifeline is down. The important thing is you got the right answer. You're now three for three in So You Think You Know Baseball. Uh, By the way, before we move on to the next inning, our fourth inning, let's clean up some unfinished business. Alex Karen tells us via the chat, that Dolph Luque was from Cuba. I had initially said he was from the Dominican Republic, but Luque actually Cuban. The other three players in that question were players from the Dominican. So thank you to Alex. Uh, Bill Spar also uh, supplied us with that information. We do appreciate that assistance. All right, fourth inning. Category is baseball history. Who was the last National League player to hit 400 in a season last national league player to reach the milestone 400 for a full season was it a tony gwynn b ralph gar c bill terry d tommy holmes yeah when gar terry or holmes what do you think guys okay i think we're gonna pull the participants Okay, so they want to poll the participants on this one. Not sure what the correct answer might be between Gwen, Gar, Terry, and Holmes. So we're going to ask all of our viewers, if you think you know the answer, if you're pretty sure, Terry, Terry. we're going to ask you to go in on the Zoom group chat, put your Terry answer in. Uh, we're getting a lot of answers for Bill Terry. In fact, four for Terry, now five for Terry. Okay, I think Six we're going to go for Bill Terry. Terry. We'll give it just another moment or two. Uh, we do have one person voting for Tony Gwynn. Another for Bill Terry. Max and Ethan also going for Bill Terry. So at this point, it's almost 100% Bill Terry. There is one person voting for Tony Gwynn. But I think we've had about a dozen respond respondents. That's a word. And uh, all but one think that it's Bill Terry. What do you think, guys? Yeah, it's Bill Terry. They're going to go with C, Bill Terry. You remember what team he played for? White Sox? Was it White Sox? Oh, no. What do you say? No. 
They don't remember. Well, I'm not penalizing you. I'm just, I'm just chatting you up because I know you have the right answer. And it is C, Bill Terry. There you go. You are correct. Bill Terry played for the New York Giants. Nice and he did hit 400 in a season. The last National Leaguer to do that. Probably know who the last American Leaguer was. Uh, Hall of Famer that you're quite familiar with, Ted Williams. All right, good job, guys. So you did use your poll to participants. You have also used 50-50. You have one lifeline remaining for these final five innings, potentially, and that is call to the bullpen. So let's see what our next category is for the fifth inning. It is records. The question, which batter holds the record for most RBI by a National League rookie? A, Albert Pujols. B, Eric Davis. Is it C, Frank Howard? Or is it D, Wally Berger? Who holds the record for most RBI by a National League rookie? Is it Pujols, Davis, Howard, or Berger? I don't know. Eric Davis won the rookie year. I can't remember so Cincinnati Davis late eighties. So uh, Howard had a Howard had a big Howard won rookie of the year. So I don't know Wally Berger though. He's the X Factor. Albert Pujols, active player now with the Angels. Davis, Howard, Berger, all of course retired from baseball. Okay, my dad says let's use the last lifeline. All right, so Jim wants to go with the last lifeline. He's going to try to play conservatively here to um, kind of chatted about it. Couldn't come up with what they felt confidently was the right answer. So we're going to do call to the bullpen. So anybody who thinks they have the right answer, we're going to ask them to press the raise their hand button. Raise the hand button. Got five participants who have raised their hand. Oh, one dropped out. We're back down to four. So, guys, we have four participants who have raised a hand. Can you see who those are? Yes, we can. Who would you like to go with? Let's go with Thomas P. Okay, you're gonna go with Tom. Got Tom's microphone working. Tom, yes, I'm, you on the line with us? I'm sorry to say I am. I hope I got the right answer. Sorry to say you are. Where are you, where are you from, Tom? I'm about uh, two hours away from Cooperstown. All right. I live can, just can south you say of Rochester. Town or is, it, is it a secret? No, it's Avon, A V O N. Oh, yeah. Definitely I'm, I'm, I'm from originally from Waterbury, the home of Jimmy Pearsall. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. It was a city split between the Red Sox and the Yankees. Okay. And it's pronounced Avon, not Avon. That's correct. Yeah. I did not know that. Excellent. Yeah. All right. So Tom from Avon, pretty confident, we hope. Howard. Which batter holds the record for most RBI by a National League rookie? What do you think, Tom? I'm going to go with Wally Berger. Okay. Tom is going to go with D. Wally Berger. Never heard of him, so I think he's the answer. <laughs> Using an unscientific method. He's never heard of Wally Berger, who is a legitimate <laughs> player. Right. Not a made-up name. Not sure how confident Tom is in that right answer, but for what it's worth, he goes with Wally Berger. Uh, what do you think, guys? You can go with that. You can go with your hunch. What's your preference at this point? Okay, I think we're going to stick with our answer of Frank Howard. Okay, so they originally had thought it was Hondo, Frank Howard. You're going to go with that as your final answer? Uh, right. Right. Uh, let's go with Wally Berger. Wally Berger? Yeah. Oh, okay, fine. We'll go with Wally Berger. Wally Berger. Now, make sure you're both on the same page. Make sure you're in agreement here. You you're out of lifelines, so unfortunately, we can't offer you any more help. Okay. Back After and forth between Berger and line. Howard, what do you like? Let's go with Howard. Okay, they're going to go with C, Frank Howard. Let's see. Is that correct? Unfortunately not. I'm sorry, guys. It actually was the most recent current player on this list. Albert Pools did it as a rookie with the St. Louis Cardinals. Sorry about that, guys, but you played very well. You did a good job. 
You got all the way through to the fifth inning. This was not an easy question at all. Pretty tough fifth inning question, as a matter of fact. But we do have a consolation prize for you. We do thank you for participating. Did you have fun? Yes. Thank you. All right. That's the important thing. And you played well and played competitively. Well, we want to thank all three of our teams, uh, Trey and Jim Murnane, Tina and Alex Bird. And we did have one set of champions, Kyle and Scott Plassman from San Diego, California. But thanks to all six of our, our participants, all three teams, uh, for giving us a nice competitive game of So You Think You Know Baseball. We do want to remind fans about our website. It's baseballhall.org. Uh, and if you go there, you can learn about becoming a member, becoming a supporter of the Baseball Hall of Fame. If you do that, you get um, free admission to the museum, unlimited for a full year. Uh, we have individual memberships, we have family memberships, we have higher end memberships, but you can find out about all those different levels of supporting the Hall of Fame. Um, it's something that uh, is a, it's a great way to support our cause. And if you're a baseball fan, it's a lot of fun as well. So consider being a member and supporting the Baseball Hall of Fame. Thanks to all of our participants. Thanks to uh, our winners and our contestants as well. We hope you've enjoyed So You Think You Know Baseball. Please join us next time. We're not sure when that's going to be, but we hope it'll be in a couple of weeks. Also stay with us. We'll be announcing shortly at our website uh, who our next Hall of Fame guest will be for Virtual Legends of the Game. We're working on that as I speak at this very moment. Thanks for being with us for So You Think You Know Baseball. Have a great day, everybody.